Hey, good morning, guys. Dave Anderson here, Heli Cool Heli Pad. Hey, today we're going to be taking a road trip, another adventure. This time, off to Mike Moffat's place to get this transmission oil changed. I am so thankful that's going to happen. If you have one of these, you know how crappy they shift. It's going to be so nice to have it shifted like a car. You guys stay tuned. All right, so here's the here is the before, and I dare anybody to drink hot coffee. guys <laughs> made it to, to Mike Moffat's shop and uh, wow you know what Malachi actually fits inside this shop which is really cool this will be like I'm like totally jealous because I'll be able to work on Malachi without getting wet and of course this is Mike's rig Beetle Bailey is that what you're gonna call it Mike what are you gonna call it Beetle Bailey yes cool <laughs> Well, let me tell you what, this is about nine steps up from where I'm used to. <laughs> so why am I here today? Well, this thing obviously shifts like a freaking mule. So we're gonna start draining the transmission oil, do a flush and do a transmission oil change. You guys stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how. And when I say I'm gonna show you how, I really mean Mike's gonna show you how. My intention was for Mike to lend his knowledge, experience, and direction to help me do this, but he just jumped right in just because he's a mechanic. He loves this kind of stuff, and he is very generous of heart. Thank you so very much, Mike. Okay, so you know where we're at. And what size is that? It's three-eighths square. Three-eighths. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, three-eighths drive. And this has got magnet on it, so if the tra transmission or transfer case is coming apart, that is ugly. It is a little dark, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like used motor oil. <laughs> Mine looked like new motor oil. Yeah, I think mine's used motor oil. And it is gonna come out of there nice and hot. You want to, uh, of course, run the truck for a while so that the transmission is good and hot. Well, there's a magnet right here. And all we got was this little bit of fuzz off of it. So nothing's broken. Great news. Well, after it's done draining, go ahead and put the plug back in to the transfer case. Now, we don't need to put it in tight because we're just going to take it out again in a little bit. Yep. And we're right next to the, the exhaust pipe, and that is the plug right there. So it looks like it's probably going to get all over the exhaust pipe. It's going to hit the exhaust. It's already Dang. up against the cardboard. Yeah, it? it is. It is. Well, and it just feels funky. And now I got stuck up against that. I think I better loosen up that exhaust. There we go, holy mackerel. It's hot. Okay, can you give it a push to it? Yeah. Now, I'm not going to put this in tight either because we're just going to take it out again. Now, these are the two lines that are going to the uh, cooler. There's a little bit better view of it. So it is the top one that you need to try to try to get loose because that is um, the return. So it is going to flush the uh, heat exchanger cooler and come back this way. And uh, we wanna be able to uh, hook a hose onto that, flush that all out, get all that engine oil out of there and replace it with the transmission fluid. I think Jacob is gonna be jealous, yes. 
I haven't seen what that cooler looks like. It is that round tube looking thing. It's about six inches in diameter, about uh, maybe 18 inches long. Now the bottom one has been uh, loosened up. All right, both lines are now off. And Mike is fabricating a little piece of hose that is going to fit over the top of that upper. We just don't want it to spray in the transmission fluid all over the place. I had to look this up to make it sure it was TES-295 compliant. It is, but this is Dello Synthetic. What we're going to do here is we've got the return hose from the cooler in a bucket. So we're going to pour a little bit of fluid in here and then start it up. And while it's running, continue to pour fluid through it until it comes out of the uh, cooler return red. That means we've flushed 90% of the fluid out of the converter and the transmission. Yeah, make sure that you have proper ventilation when you're doing this. So we're gonna pour a little bit in here so I can get the camera in two places at once. Um, he's gonna add a little bit and then I'm gonna go underneath while he starts it up. Okay, I'm ready. to say a little bit maybe yeah. just a little tinge red go ahead Well, there's the gack that came out of it. Next step is to pull the plugs again and drain them out. Oh, look, that looks pretty clean. Sometimes if you put those chrome adapters on those impact wrenches, they become kind of permanent. And we need to hook these lines up again. Oh. Now that looks pretty red to me, Dave. Yeah, that looks pretty red. <laughs> yeah, I can see it through the light. Well, the torque converter holds most of the oil. Somewhere I'm going to make sure it fits that. All right, since this actually spun, um, what we had to do is after I got this on, Hold this in place and turn that jam nut so that it basically holds this whole. It locks that all in place. Yeah, it locks this fitting right in place. And yeah. there's an O-ring underneath that nut that seals it too. Huh. Good oh, information. I didn't realize you were video. Eh? Good information. Yeah, O-rings, instructions. Two builders, they're both the same. There is part number. When pulling the transmission oil filter, it's good to have a very big drip pan because it will splash around about a half a quart of oil. Ensure to clean the surfaces thoroughly, especially where the gaskets meet. Poor cleanliness is going to lead to leaks, and we just don't want to have that. Uh, 
Line. So, okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop the cover off. Let it drain. You see, there was hardly anything in there. Yep, I can see that. And I left one bolt in so it didn't fall down and make an absolute mess. So you can't quite get it out of there. But what you can do is go up here between the filter. See if I can do this with my fingers. So you pop the filter loose from the housing? That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Nothing to it. There's the little housing. You just pop the filter loose. After putting the O-ring on, running a small screwdriver around it will take out any rolls that the O-ring might have. Okay, the, the filter is in the hole. Now you can fit the filter housing on it and push it up in there nice and hard and it should pop into place, right? Well, if I put enough grease on it, I'm struggling with it a bit. You know how it is when somebody's watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the last thing to do is to, of course, fill this thing up the rest of the way with a really good transmission oil. Of course, you always have to start them up in order to check the transmission oil level, and if it doesn't have enough in it, you got to add more. We just took it for a spin and we're going to be checking the, the fluid level one more time. I think it's right there. And one of the last things is to make sure that there are no leaks. Okay, I want to show you the new and improved. They're not steel lines all the way. They're, you can see right in the picture there that they are two hoses. And that makes this job about 10 times easier. Let me see if I can get a... And they go right in there. Easy to come out of there. Take those fittings off. Just bloop one into a bucket. No problem. All right, guys. It's time to do a final test. All right, guys, under the exact conditions as yesterday, pulling out on the road. Hey guys, it just just real quick, I want to tell you the last few things that I really, really noticed is that smooth, smooth shifting. But you know what? That didn't happen right away. The transmission had to relearn a few things, and it was a little bit herky-jerky at first, but 
as I drove, it got better and better and better and smoother and smoother. Before I had this done, if Malachi saw a hill coming, sometimes it would inexplicably shift down into six gear. And I would lose about five mile an hour. I'm like, what is going on with this? This doesn't happen anymore. This thing stays in seventh, flies up those hills. I mean, it, it just seems like it has so much more runability, so much more authority. It doesn't seem sluggish anymore. It wants to just go. Um, it was just a terrific ride home from Mike's place. And one last thing, Mike, I so much appreciate what you did for me. I didn't expect you to do as much work as you were doing. And I so much appreciate it. Thank you so very much for your hospitality. Until next time, guys, I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless.